Hi, good morning. It's Jim from the Math Star Observatory. Guys, in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the magnetosphere. Uh, the reason for that is it is a major component of a magnetic pole reversal. And the reason for that is, is you know, we don't just have a magneto within the inside of our planet generating the magnetic poles. It's also responsible for producing the protective shield that we've got, which is known commonly as the magnetosphere. Now, the magnetosphere has a lot of uh, different components to it. Uh, what we're looking at right now is uh, a computer modelled uh, event of um, some degree of compression on the magneto pores and that is to do with the um, you know the dynamic pressure of the solar wind so material and the velocity of that material that's traveling towards our magnetosphere obviously affects the magnetosphere and when it does you get like in normal times on the left hand side of the screen uh, you see that the uh, bow shock uh, the magneto pores and um, the, the plasma pores is not being compressed but if we look on the right side of the screen you can see what happens when we get a moderate amount of solar wind coming off the sun how that dynamic pressure affects uh, the magneto pores um, before we get into looking at some uh, videos of um, more computer modeled um, you know simulations from bats or us I want to just say you know I want to keep it um, at low levels of technicality yeah I know there's a lot of concepts you might not have heard of like you know the cusp uh, the magneto pools uh, you know and things like this and the van Allen belts but it's all to do with our protective shield that we've got and I'll try and keep it as simple as possible because there's a theory I've got uh, and that is if our magnetic poles are indeed migrating towards Russia and we know that that is the case for the northern hemisphere and at that some point they could go into a reversal uh, when they do when it does get into that high intensity region because we know it's on its way there now that's that's um, been resolved we know what's going to happen uh, within the next four to seven years maybe uh, it will arrive in that I'm talking about the magnetic pole will arrive in that high intensity region and the reason for that is because the dissipation that's taking place in that other region across the northern hemisphere of our planet around Canada uh, so it's got nowhere else to go but home to its high intensity region when it does that, I'm figuring that the magneto pores, which changes seasonally, I'm going to show you that in this video, will be at a different angle. And what more interests me is where the cusps will be on the, on the Earth. And I'm just wondering now how much our magnetosphere um, adds to the climates that we have seasonally. Um, and whether the amount of inbound radiation through the cusp is actually what moderates uh, the temperatures around our planet. Um, so, you know, we're going to get into that. I want to show you more about the theory that we've got, but let me just first of all cover some ground and bring you up to speed with how the magnetos pause changes with regards to different points of our journey around our sun and I'll try and keep it like I said as, as easy as I can uh, before we get into that just want to say a big thank you to the people yesterday that pledged a bit of support for the channel you know guys obviously we don't just talk uh, about the subject of the pole shift on this channel we get equipment out into the field and you know we really want to uh, in the future have more equipment out there so that we can get more data back in and we can you know probably be one step ahead of the changes that are taking place on our planet and at the same time learn more about these changes and you know get an idea as to what we're going to expect further down the road so it's about forecasting with the data that we collect and not so much just speculating all the time so you know big thanks to you guys okay let's hit the ground running so before we get into looking at some uh, imagery of the modelling, uh, I just want to quickly uh, give you a little idea of what we're interested in. We're interested, as you can see, I've drew three arrows uh, running through the Earth uh, and the magneto pores. And what we're interested in, uh, sorry, the plasma sphere is what we're interested in, and the shape and the angle of the, of the plasma sphere as it goes, as we travel around our sun. Now, if you imagine that the Earth is on a tilt, and you know that's how 
we get over here in the winter time um uh, you know at an angle further away from the sun but at the summer time we are uh, at it's not that the angle changes it's just the position uh, of us going around the sun but we are furthest away at the winter and closest uh, to the sun at the summer and it's the same for the southern hemisphere but what happens during this time uh, with regards to our magnetosphere is the magneto pulls and the plasmosphere changes their angle and you're going to get where I'm going with this uh, I'm going to show you the three positions that this can be in and you know if we look at stills from January um, we will see that the angle is up um, going towards the top right hand side of the screen if we're looking at somewhere halfway um, you know in the middle of the year somewhere around January July sorry we'll see that the angle changes uh, going down towards the bottom right hand side of the screen and if we are at times like in April or October where you know we are sort of like in wind uh, not in spring or autumn uh, you'll see that we are on a horizontal line going straight um, easterly if you want to on that screen and that's the arrow that represents that the reason why we're looking at this is because as you know our magnetic pole is dragging the north pole over uh, towards Russia right now and has been doing so for a long time now um, you know the modeling system hasn't been going that long at um, the computer community modeling um, community that long I don't think we've even got 20 years even though this does show us 2014 to run the modeling system uh, at that point I've struggled so whether it's down to something else you know the feed that I've got or what I don't think it is but you know I, let's just assume that this data isn't any uh, 20 years old it doesn't go back 20 years to 2000 um, so let's have a look so I can show you where I'm going what happens at say January then July and we'll have a look at April and October and you'll get an idea but mainly we're interested in the position of the magneto uh, uh, pores or the plasma plasma pores in which is the area closest to the earth and its angle that's what we're after the angle so on this first run we're looking at 200 frames uh, on the 1st of January 2019 and what I want you to uh, pay attention is to that little area closest to the earth with them first few rings that come off there uh, the plasmosphere um, you'll note that it is if you like just directing uh, towards the top right hand of the screen that you're looking at now when we look at uh, somewhere like in um, July uh, we'll have gone halfway around the Sun but the plasmosphere uh, will be in a different uh, angle pointing down towards the screen let me show you that so now as you can see uh, we're in the 1st of July um, and what we're looking at is the plasma sphere now is pointing down towards the bottom right hand side of the screen that you're looking at um, we're going to just show you uh, what it looks like in April I don't need to show you what it looks like in October because you can just trust me that it will be the same um, it is almost horizontal uh, the plasma sphere but the point of showing you this guys is to show you that as we orbit around the Sun the magnetosphere changes its angle um, and, you know obviously right now uh, in July over the northern hemisphere we would be closest to the Sun and you can see that there is uh, a change in the vertical angle of the plasma sphere and that's all I wanted to demonstrate for this point uh, not go into too much detail obviously there are other things on this that we can see like the moon goes 13 and 14 sometimes goes um, 15 is on there you can see CMOS uh, there's obviously we could talk about the uh, polar cap the crossed lines the, the field line the B field lines and all that but just want to keep it nice and simple and we'll talk about those things at a later date we'll also have a look at the modeling system uh, when it records CMEs and how it comp causes those compressions that we saw at the beginning of the video so you know I do want to um, go down this line with you looking more at the uh, Batsarus um, data and these videos of the magnetosphere because it is like I said at the beginning of the video really important that we um, do you know include this now into the pole shift um, you know discussions that we have on YouTube 
Uh, so let's just show you what it looks like then in April so that you've got three of the dimensions of how the magneto uh, pause or sorry the magnetosphere changes its angle as we just go around the uh, orbit on uh, you know a 365 day a year so here you can see uh, you know 200 um, slides of April uh, the first if I went to October, it'd be the exact same thing. What we'd be looking at is the plasma sphere uh, would be horizontally going towards the centre of the screen or easterly, if you like, um, and not at much of an angle uh, down towards the bottom right hand side or up to the top right hand side. But what this demonstrates once again is that our magnetosphere is not fixed, rigid um, to our Earth. As we go round uh, the sun, um, it changes its angle and the important point is here what I'm going to make uh, is that if our magnetic poles are migrating towards Russia uh, then uh, the magnetosphere angle is going to change and why is that important? Well two things happen um, at two different type, uh, parts of the uh, or the orbit around the Sun is that the cusp uh, which I'm going to show you now on the on the magnetosphere model uh, aligns more to the sun and if the bow shock is subject to a higher density uh, and pressure from the, the sun uh, then it is more likely to get through these two vulnerable uh, areas let's have a look at the modeling system so you can see that but just in general I wanted to show you that you know and prove to you so that I'm not just saying it you know I wanted you to see that as the uh, as we go around the sun each year you know the magnetosphere does uh, slip over um, you know the uh, planet and you know as a result of that these two areas that we're going to look at move on the planet so as you can see uh, we're looking at the diagram of the Earth's magnetosphere uh, you can see the plasma sphere now what I'm talking about those two little blue uh, bulges either side of the Earth and you can see that this would be closely in association with a time period or orbit period close to April or October because it's vertical sorry it's horizontal if it was going towards the top left hand side of the screen it would probably be in January and if it was going towards the bottom side of the screen we'd be in somewhere around the, the July period of the rotation around the, the um, Sun. Now you can see on this um, diagram the part that I'm talking about the cusp so if you can imagine uh, we was at uh, July right now uh, the plasma sphere would be pointing towards the bottom left hand side of the screen which would expose the cusp more to solar wind than normal so why is it important then that we're even interested in the cusp uh, at different points of time in the year and why uh, did I go to the, the level to show you that as we go around the sun each year uh, the magnetosphere slips over the earth and the cusps end up at different points of the year the reason is, is I believe it regulates the climate and if uh, we go to you know uh, NOAA's release that they did earlier January this year of where uh, these high intensity regions are you will see that our magnetic north pole is moving in the direction to Russia and it will be there at some point in the near future but more to the point as it does that it is going to cause the magnetosphere to change its angle uh, with regards to um, you know its approach around the Sun and regardless of the fact that it tilts normally uh, from January to July April and October it is going to alter it permanently whilst it's in Russia for that period of time and that could change the climate on our planet more so because these cusps are going to line up more directly with this incoming solar wind so let's have a look at the uh, NOAA map of this year so we're looking at the main field total intensity and uh, what we're looking at is all the regions on the planet that have high uh, intensities of magnetism and low intensities obviously the one which is centered around Brazil is the South Atlantic anomaly which is also growing um, in size as time goes on through this pole shift uh, we know that Canada intensity is shrinking 
and we know that Russia's intensity is increasing. And our magnetic north pole, the thing our compass points to, is somewhere central above uh, the UK, for argument's sake. It's a little bit towards Russia than just being exactly central or zero on this map. But it is inevitably going to end up in this region here, in Russia, central. And when it does, it is going to change the angle of the plasma sphere uh, that protects us. And it's going to move the cusps either side of the plasma sphere, which are the vulnerable regions where solar radiation can penetrate through into the Valalian belt. I, I really believe now, thinking about this, guys, and looking at the way the angle changes throughout the year that is responsible uh, for the total amount of solar radiation we actually get in our planet, I reckon it has, um, you know, a, a, a positive uh, feedback on the climate. I really do believe that now. And I'm just uh, concerned that if we're going to see the magnetic north pole move, you know, quite a few degrees over the northern hemisphere and we, we haven't got data um, going far back at Batsarus uh, that we can examine you know a hundred years of data because we would then see before the pole started to reverse what the position of the magnetosphere was naturally at January and uh, at July and at April and October at different points of the year uh, because I believe what we're looking at today with the magnetosphere is not in its original position and I reckon more so over the last 30 years and it's a shame that it, even uh, Batsarus data doesn't go back 30 years because we could probably see a slight change in the angle of the slippage at that point but what we are going to see from now to the point of where the magnetic north pole arrives in the centre of Russia in that high intensity region over the next few years we are going to see what effects that has on the position of the magnetosphere um, with regards to the plasma sphere sorry being almost at you know an equatorial center point on our planet my point is this is that the cusps are going to be in a different position to what they are right now and we could see you know a, a cooling effect on our planet as a result of that so Hope you've enjoyed the um, you know the little discussion we've had today. Again, just more to the point, reiterating the fact that you know we've got a magnetic north pole uh, heading now towards Russia, the centre of Russia. Um, it's heading home, if you like. It's where this little magnifying glass is, and it's going to be like its counterpart down here on the southern hemisphere of our Earth. And as you can see, in the centre of the high intensity region is the exact. Uh, safe magnetic pole and that is where our north pole is heading right now if you like it's heading home when it gets there guys we could at that point see you know the beginnings of a full reversal if not before that so you know stay tuned uh, for further updates and more um, you know computer modeling from Batsarus or from um, the computer community modeling center uh, guys, if you want to help support what we do, uh, you know, we are trying to build more equipment and get it out there in the field. There is a link down there below. And I'll say what I usually do. You have a great day, as always. Bye for now.